Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we're going to be looking at something very, very interesting. Trust me, you are going to be blown away. So what we're looking at today is how to clean up your image using frequency separation. So, you know, blemish removal, everything we're going to be doing, we'll be doing inside frequency separation. So I'm going to show you the best settings that allows you to also be able to take care of your blemishes while setting up your frequency separation. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started so the first thing we're going to be doing is to open up our action which we are going to be using now we're going to run our frequency separation action and i'll put you through the settings necessary so this is our frequency separation action over here i'm going to play it and looking at the, this image i need to be able to clean up the blemishes now you need to ask yourself what settings in your gaussian blur allows you take away all textures, what settings allows you retain some textures in the colors so that as you are taking care of the colors, some of the textures which are your blemishes are also being taken care of. Now you need to click on the face of your object or any part of the body so that this checkbox over here is going to bring that part of the image to you. Now if you look at this area, you notice that everything is blurred out. So that means that if we start retouching with this, we are going to have a very high textured image that retains all the textures. So it means the blemishes will not get away. So what do we do? We take it down until we can be able to see some of the blemishes even through the box over here. So we'll try so around five and see what that gives to us. We can even zoom back all back. This is beautiful. We can work with five. We press OK and it's done. This is the secret. Then you open it up, go to your low frequency, pick up your mixer brush tool and gradually start painting over your object. Now, as you're painting, you need to be careful so you don't distort your image. Very simple. So I, I'm, I'm just going to do the forehead and I'll also show you how much we've done with just few strokes already. Yeah. Beautiful. So this is the before. This is the after. You notice that some of the blemishes over here are even beginning to disappear. Yeah, that is how that works. Then we'll come to the to the face. Do the same thing. Beautiful. Look at the way that is taking care of those acnes. And even take your number as your Gaussian blow lower than five to see how much of the blemishes you are going to also lose. Okay, so come over to this area. It might seem like we're not doing so much, but I'm going to show you the final result very soon. So one thing you also notice is that each area I'm painting, I'm making sure that my brush is matching the size of that area so that it will look weird and I won't also have to distort the shape of my object. Okay, so let me zoom back and show you what we've done quickly. This is the before, this is the after. In few minutes, we've been able to create something really beautiful. So you see the way we're even taking away the blemishes with just frequency separation without having to do even any other thing. The before, the after, the before, the after. So at this point, the next thing you need to do is to now go to your high frequency, pick up your clone stamp tool and remove those tiny, tiny ones that you will also want to lose that didn't leave with the mixer brush too. So you just use your clone stamp inside your high frequency remember and take care of them these tiny tiny ones over here so if you notice i'm doing that from a distance because i just want to take care of the ones that are very visible the ones that stands out to you the moment you look at the image good see the way that area is clean now okay we'll come over to this area do the same thing I remember I'm using a very tiny clone stamp, very tiny, it's very important. So you don't leave clone stamps uh, packed on your object. When 
when someone looks at it, they could tell, ah, something weird is happening here. That's why I'm using something tiny, something almost the size of the blemish I'm removing. to this area back again just saw that one standing there all right okay look at the nose take care of that as well so the more time you spend doing this in your image is the more flawless it's going to come out this particular last step i'm taking the most time you spend doing it the more time you spend taking care of those tiny, 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 tiny skin textures that might look rough to you at the end of the day, the more beautiful your image is going to come out. So look at what we've done quickly. This is the before. This is the after. Isn't this amazing? How the image was looking before and how it is looking now with just frequency separation, the before, the after. And let me quickly show you another thing you can do with your image. You can just quickly change your background. So I'm going to quickly change this background so that the whole thing will look really, really seamless and probably still blend the skin tone for your bonus tips. So I'm going to make a selection of my object. Oh, perfect. Once my object is selected, I'm going to right click on the, up, on the image and go to select inverse so that the background will be selected that I'm going to make a duplicate. Click on the object one more time and go to layer via cut. So I have my background on a separate layer. I have my object on a separate layer. I reloaded the selection by holding my control and clicking on this area. So I'll just go straight to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So I can just smoothen out the background in case it has any form of texture. Then I'm going to make my object stay above the layer of the background while I go into my solid color over my background and just make a selection so i want to pick the blues on her dress but of course i'm going to change the blend mode to something darker then the next thing i want to do is to create a separation between her and the background by introducing a gradient light just behind her like this yeah so we need i need something really bright something not too colorful just that highlight behind her beautiful you can now scale up a little press OK, you can decide to, to look for a blend mode that will make it look really cool. So we're looking for something good. I think I love what I have here, but of course I'm going to drop it down. Yeah, then I'll spread it out a little. Good. So now my object is looking dark, obviously. So I'm going to brighten her up a little. So to blend your whole skin tone, because I'm looking at my object now and her face is slightly different from her body. It's very simple. Create a solid color adjustment layer, press OK, hide it, then make a selection of any part of her skin, pick from her skin, press OK. So you can open this up now. So I'm going to make a duplicate of my main object, create a mask for it, go to select, go to color range, so that I can just select the skin tone. And beautifully, it's doing that work for me. Don't bother about the hair, please. Uh, hair piece that entered is because the skin tone has exactly the same color and I do not have a problem with that. So I'll press OK, use this mask to replace the mask of the solid color and we'll have our solid color in mask. I'll change the blend mode to color. So the reason I'm changing it to color is very simple to make sure that the whole skin tone is matching. Yeah, so I'm removing it from the earring and probably from the head piece if I want to remove that as well or the hair tie, whatever that is. OK, so let me just remove that as well. Beautiful. I think I removed a little bit too much. So I'm going to paint here back in. Sorry. Good. All right. So the next thing we need to do is to reduce the opacity. Yes, of course. So we'll drop it down. So I'm reducing the fuel rather. Till the whole skin tone is looking seamless, but my coloring is not too much. I think I like what I have here. I like the result I have here, the before, the after. I know you may not be able to see. Let me take it up a little so you can see the difference. Yeah, the before, the after, the before, the after. So at this point, you can decide to make a duplicate and change the other one to soft light if you need more saturation on your skin, which I do not think I will be needing. 
All right, so having done that, I'm going to match everything up together and apply my final step, which you already are guessing right now, which is my done for you retouch action, just to bring everything together. So I'm going to load up my done for you, click on it and press enter. So I'm keeping it somewhere around two. Just to give us that very smooth, seamless skin, press OK. Bam, this is good. And once that is done, reduce the opacity. Yes, of course. And we are good to go. So let me make a snapshot of everything we have done so I can show you the whole before and after. This is the snapshot. All right, so this is the image when we came into Photoshop. This is the final result, the before, the after, the before, the after. So all we did here is just take care of our skin texture by smoothing and using our frequency separation, adding a little bit of color grading to it. And towards the end, used our done for you to give it that final touch and look thank you so much for watching do make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and if you subscribe make sure you turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video thank you so much and see you on the very next one